Thinking of turning your sole trader business into a limited company? Well, watch on. As a business accountant, my team and I spend all day long helping business owners on their journey. And one thing we get involved with a lot is helping people who have got successful sole trader businesses turn themselves into a limited company. Now this is one of these areas I think often gets overlooked like it's really, really simple. And in actual fact, there's quite a lot of tax things that could potentially go wrong here. So there's some great tax planning opportunities and I'm gonna recap on why you might want to be limited briefly in this video and also some other videos on the channel cover that. But there's some really good things long-term to be in a limited company, but if you're a sole trader turning yourself into one, there's also a lot of good planning that goes on, but there's also a lot of things you could get wrong, which later down the line, if HMRC looked at it, would sting you for, for a tax bill. So I'm gonna cover the highlights in this video. I'm not gonna go super, super detailed because you'd fall asleep probably, but I am gonna give you the highlights and things you should be thinking about when you do it. So before we get into it, if you like these types of videos, make sure to click the subscribe button below so you get notified whenever we release more just like it. So let's recap then, why might you want to be a limited company? Well, where do we start? I mean, as accountants, we talk about them a lot. And I think the main benefits that we see, if you're already a sole trader and you're looking to go limited, if you've been talking to an accountant about this, they've quite often told you, actually, we think this is a good idea for you because you're gonna save tax. And that includes national insurance when I say tax, let's just say sort of taxes and national insurance. You're gonna save some money, it's gonna make sense moving forward. So that's fine. And that's because they enjoy lower rates of tax. You can pay yourself in funky ways. Uh, you can use other people to pay and all these kind of things and there's a load of videos on the channel that explain to you about these things so just make sure to check those out I'm not going to go in any more detail than other than to say in the right circumstances they are awesome um, in the wrong circumstances probably the other 50 percent of our day we're trying to tell people have you really considered whether this is right for you but in the right circumstances yeah of course they're brilliant and of course we we do recommend them where they're absolutely suitable so that aside the main reason people will want to do them quite often is they like the idea of this limited liability so that means that the company's its own legal thing it's its own thing and you know if it got into trouble or anything else then you know all your liabilities restricted to that company generally you can't you know lose your house or something like that so uh, that's a massive attraction for a lot of people so yeah you might want to incorporate so let's just presume you know you've realized you're making enough money it makes sense to go limited and you've decided cool I've got this business I'm gonna then incorporate it so if you imagine in a business there's lots of things you might have going on you obviously got cash in the bank you might have money that's owed to you, so debtors as it's known as the term, but or accounts receivable, but money that's owed to you. There's money you owe out, so your suppliers you might be paying, or subcontractors, people like that, even the tax people, they're known as creditors, or you might often see them in your software as accounts payable. You then sometimes, if you're really lucky, you might have some business property in there, Maybe it's a, a very well-established business and you've, you've bought some property that you're operating out of, so that could be in there. And then of course you could have your equipment. So most people are gonna have computers and the like, um, but depending on the type of business, it could be very substantial pieces of equipment that are sitting in that company. And then the one that gets left out and forgotten about, especially the further down the, the sort of the market you go, you know, the, the smaller businesses forget about this one, and that's goodwill. Now, if you've not come across that term before, generally, if you imagine, if you were to sell your business today and you added up all those things, you know, the cash, the money in and the money out, uh, you looked at um, all your equipment you had on hand and everything else, there'd undoubtedly be this sort of float in value. So let's say you sold your business for 100 grand and all the other things added up to 60K. This 40K difference is the goodwill. It's kind of the intangible thing, you know? It's kind of the brand, the, the thing that's not really kind of got a cost to it, but exists, it's that extra value. And that's one of the things that you have to consider when you move from sole trader into limited. And it's a massive topic, and it's one of those things that uh, you, I just need you to know that you need to think about it. And sometimes you might need to get it valued. And the reason for that is if you don't, you can end up with a capital gains tax bill. Because what happens when you transfer these things into a new limited company, they count a lot of them as disposals. So they say you've disposed of them. You know, you've sold them as an individual to your company. And because you're kind of connected to that company, quite often they have to be at market rate. So they look at it, well, what happens if we were to sell this to another third party on the open market? You know, what would it fetch? You know, so if you've got property in there, for example, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? You can go on Zoopla or whatever and figure out what that would be. And they're gonna to say to you, look, you're transferring that and therefore there could be a capital gain on it if you make a profit, there could be stamp duty on it because we're moving it at a big value, you know, all these things. And it's gonna cause you a big tax bill. But the same sort of things apply 
to things like goodwill. So you have to consider what you might do in this particular occasion. And the, the rules for how you come up with whether goodwill exists and how much it is are very complex. And sometimes you actually can determine there isn't any, you don't have to worry about it. But unless you think about it uh, at the time, it can be uh, a problem. But it also, and we'll talk about it later, can be a benefit sometimes. So consider goodwill, but they're kind of the list. So you've got this list of things you've got to consider of what do we do with all these things? If you've got some accounts and they do what they call a balance sheet in those accounts that kind of show that position, what you own, what you owe, and what's left, everything on there, you want to think, I've got to do something about that if I want to move it into a limited company. Now, some of the things might be quite simple. So for example, you might have stock you want to transfer. Well, actually that needs to be dealt with in the accounts, but again, getting that right and making sure that it doesn't cause you a, an income tax, a personal tax problem on your last tax return is quite big. The same when you sell equipment. So for a lot of people, when they buy big equipment, and I've talked about it on other videos, you know, you've, there's this thing called annual investment allowance or capital allowances. So in the first year, you know, you buy a big van or you buy a big laptop or a digger or something like that, you can quite often claim 100% of the tax relief in one go. Now, when you transfer that and sell it to a limited company, obviously if you were to transfer it at kind of that market value, it could be, it could actually cause you a tax bill. So there's some things to consider around there. You can do other things to kind of reduce or avoid that. Um, and again, it's, it's a very detailed thing. Thing. but just know that you do have to think about well what are we going to sell those to the limited company for are we going to sell them all is there some we want to retain and talking about those things uh, can determine what reliefs you might use and I'll talk about those in a minute but yeah those kind of things can cause you an income tax bill if you don't consider the equipment you've got on hand um, or the stock for example they're just two that can affect those income tax levels uh, going forward then as I say the obvious ones are things like property you know if you're going to transfer that property and it's got a gain that's going to be a massive tax bill potentially especially if you've held it for a while and it's gone up in value and things like that so they're the they're the kind of main traps and then so you go through this balance sheet and you decide what am I going to transfer and if you decide actually you want to move the whole lot you might decide that you can use this relief called incorporation relief and that's kind of the most basic level for those of you who are geeky enough it's section 162 they call it but it's it's called incorporation tax relief and what happens with that is if you're going to transfer all of it then you can potentially uh, move all of those assets straight into your company there's no gain nothing else and then you can carry on and it they kind of get rolled up into shares so you end up getting shares in the company for that value and it locks the value in there and it locks any gain for later down the line and that's okay but you might decide that you don't want it being locked up in shares because there are some tax planning opportunities to be done by moving some of it in and I'll explain that briefly in a second. So there is a way to not worry about it. You can use this, this relief. And again, I'm talking in general terms here. There are very strict conditions like all these things in tax law that allow this to happen. But generally, there is a, a basic relief that allows you to kind of go in there and just go, yeah, yeah, I'm moving all that into the limited company. Now, if you wanted to be selective and pick just some of those items, which you might do with, let's say you wanted to leave the property out, for example, move the rest over there. You might use another relief that's available called gift or holdover relief. It's under section 165 of the particular piece of tax law. And that allows you then to be selective and sort of gift stuff to your company. Now what happens often when you do that is that they say, right, okay, well, we're gonna let you do that. So you're not gonna pay any gain now, but we're gonna take that value and that gain. And later on down the line, if you go to sell it, you're, we're gonna tax you then. So it's a, it's a way of just kind of passing that tax bill on later, if you like. And obviously you might think, well, I'm not gonna sell anything. So then that's fine. But ultimately it's somewhere down the later down the line that, that gets rolled in, hence the, hence the name of rollover relief. It's sort of the gain gets rolled over till when you eventually go to sell it. So that's one particular option that allows you to be a little bit selective about what you might do. Now, the cool thing about that and some of the other things you could potentially do is one of the tax planning opportunities is you can potentially create a loan account, a director's loan account. That's kind of like a, it's almost a theoretical sum of money. Not always. So for example, if you put £75,000 in your bank account on day one to, that you had in the bank and just transferred it over, you're going to create a loan account. Um, let's presume you haven't used any of those reliefs and you just put in this 75 grand in. Then at a later date when you want to take that 75 grand out, um, it's tax free because you've lent the money. It's in your loan account. You don't pay any further tax on that money when you pull it back out personally. And there are opportunities using some some reliefs and some other not and sometimes not using any reliefs to create those loan accounts. And again, this is very top level stuff. It's there, there's so many details and restrictions in these things, but it's very possible to create those kind of things. So that's one of the opportunities you want to consider and talk to a professional about that about how you might do that. 
when you're doing this and when you're thinking about whether those reliefs are right for you because sometimes actually it can be desirable to pay a little bit of tax to get the better tax result later. So for example, there are some other reliefs that I'm not gonna go too much detail in this video where you might be able to pay capital gains tax at a lower rate and that might be desirable given the longer term picture of what you might be able to do. So lots to think about. And then one piece that's missing out of all of this, and that's VAT. If you're VAT registered, and you might be a very successful sole trader that's VAT registered, then you're gonna to have to deal with that. And again, there's several ways of doing this, but quite often what someone will do is tr uh, make a transfer of a going concern. They intend to carry on their business. That's got very, very strict kind of rules, but in most cases, people in general, and again, very general, people are gonna do that and effectively move their uh, registration into the new company and sort of carry on as they were. But again, there's very strict rules to do that. And that would mean that, you know, you don't have to pay any VAT back because the alternate could potentially end up with you having to pay VAT back and reclaim it or charge VAT on it to your new company and reclaim it and, then, and all this kind of stuff for not getting that process right. But with the right things in place, it's very possible to literally just kind of roll on as you were. So as you can see, there's kind of quite a lot of things going on there, but it starts with that decision of what am I transferring? Is that gonna cost me any money? If it does cost me any money, is it a good idea to cost me money? And if you don't want it to cost you any money because it's a bad idea, then can we use any of these reliefs to make sure that we're dropping that bill either to zero or as low as possible? And also then make the practical things like the VAT nice and easy moving forward and just carry on your business the next day. And if that sounds like a lot of stuff, to take in. To be fair, it is. It's one of the key areas where if you've got an existing sole trader business, I would always say to you seek out um, professional advice and talk about those opportunities and talk about it with people that do it quite frequently because it's one of these things where there's some a few pitfalls and it's not an everyday occurrence for some accountants. So do check that out and make sure that they're comfy and they've done that before. And that's it. Very top level stuff. But hopefully if you are doing that, it gives you some ideas of the key highlights to look out for. If you enjoy these types of video, make sure to tell your friends, share, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.